So today on Spice Vader, I pulled out my old Xbox. It's the original Xbox from 2002 or 1 or 2 or 3. This is my first console and uh, I just recently took it out because I'm like, you know what? I better do something with this before it, uh, the clock capacitor is goes bad or it is bad I have no idea I haven't taken it apart in years I did mod it at one point there's a I did a frost mod on the green Xbox emblem on the top stupid stuff I did when I was a kid so my project today is going to be figuring out what revision this Xbox is and doing a TSOP flash to it and I'm gonna put in a 500 gig hard drive which I have one laying around here so I'm gonna put this in basically restore it to its former glory and install some games on it and get to make this Xbox great again. Good old original Xbox. I soft modded it and hacked it right away, like within the first few months of owning it. Really, my main goal is to get that original hard drive out. You could hear it's quite noisy. But yeah, I want to get in there and work on it while the thing still works, the DVD drive works. I've still got Need for Speed Most Wanted running on here, one of my all-time favorite games. Uh, I do have some cool things. I've got the actual Xbox component kit. This is the high-definition AV pack with cables. Um, I do also have the composite cables here as well. Three genuine Xbox controllers, two blue and a green one. Uh, got a generic memory card. This is what I used to flash the Splinter Cell SID soft mod installer deluxe, I believe it was called. And that was the original hack that I put on here. So I take the disc out, I should say. Close the tray again. So we want to get in, figure out which version this is, and kind of undo some of the damage and take the drive out, preserve it and put in that 500 gig drive that I'm gonna put in and load my games up. I do a one terabyte, but I don't have enough games to justify needing to do a full terabyte. And there's probably not a terabyte's worth of games that I'd play on the Xbox anyway, but. And I'll do a little cleaning on it. It's kind of dusty and um, so we'll get into it. Uh, let's switch over to the top-down camera and get it torn apart. All right, let's dig in. As you can see here, this has all been removed. I'm also missing all the nice little pads. I do have some replacement rubber feet that I'm gonna put on it, but we'll do that after we've modded everything. Got my iFixit toolkit here. We've got a Torx T20 it looks like. Look at these beefy screws. That's nice. Mmm, Craftsman. Much better. Crack this open. Yeah. All of this. So this was my wonderful mod here that I did when I was younger. I put a bunch of white LED lights just around in a circle. Let's not do this anymore. That hole isn't even circular. Yikes. So I already have an 80 wire IDE cable in here that hopefully isn't burned through. What in the world? Okay, I might need a new 80 wire cable here. There's a hole through here. Sometimes I ask myself why I do things that I do. Okay, let's just, let's be done with this. I mean, it still boots. I don't know. It's very dirty in here. So we're gonna have to clean this out. Not too shabby. 
Yeah, there we go. Yeah, it's definitely gonna need a cleaning. Woo! Hmm. <coughs> oh, wow. Yeah. <clears throat> and obviously this is the Phillips drive. See? There we go. I'm gonna get a vacuum on this and see if I can clean it up a little bit. Well, the vacuum's not doing much, so... I wanna identify which board this is. That way I can know if I could T-Sop flash it. It's just, when I was younger, I must have cut off or ripped off that sticker to the manufacturing date, so I have no idea what date it's supposed to be or like which revision, so let's just take some of this out because I've heard that you need the 80-pin cable for the adapter to work properly with a SATA drive. I mean, pretty straightforward to get into these. We can see there's a lot of weirdness here and that kind of looks a little bulgy up on top. Can you see that? Tough to tell, it might already be seeping out and leaking. Yeah, I might take this outside and air compressor it out. I don't even want to deal with this right now in its current state. It's very dusty. According to this one website that I'm going to link and just show right here, we have a focus chip, it looks like. This is a 1.4 or 1.5 Xbox. Uh, it also means that this clock capacitor needs to be removed. So I assume that's, that's this nasty boy right here. I don't intend to install a replacement. I just want to get it out of here. You can just remove that because it's not going to be necessary. So I'm going to take a pliers and wiggle it out of there. And by pliers, I mean my fingers. It's going to be just fine. I'm going to get my pliers so I don't accidentally jump those. There we go. It wasn't super bad, but you could see that there was some leakage. And it doesn't always leak out the top. It could have started leaking from the bottom on it. I just assume that this brownness is due to it starting to leak. So we're just going to check that and move on with life. So, reading one of the wikis about this issue, they're saying that we should also clean it with isopropyl alcohol too. So, let's just do that here. Because that'll neutralize the uh, alkalines. Yep, I don't think it was like exploded yet, but it was starting to and this could be a little bit of leakage, I don't know for sure. I think better safe than sorry. Let's blow this thing out with an air compressor. Some severe <laughs> dust. <laughs> okay. A little bit of dust. Oh, it's definitely a lot better to work with here. So I did a little bit of reading on how to T-SOP flash, and these are kind of the steps that we need for a version 1.4 Xbox. So we need to solder the points R7D1 and R7D2, and we just need to bridge these two little points here. And then, as well, we need to bridge R7D10. And we have a point here that we can bridge, but as you'll see in a little bit when I'm doing this, I burned off the solder pad there as I set my soldering iron to hot as the sun like this guy did. Thankfully, there's a second opportunity right here, and I ended up having to make a little jumper piece to fit in there. Proper way to do it is to set it to about 270 degrees Celsius or about 520 Fahrenheit. That was not fun. I am not an experienced solderer. I have soldered before, and every time I do, it is a nightmare. But we got it done. I have no idea what I'm doing, but you know what? It worked. <laughs> I think I got it. Oh, man. All right. That's enough nerve wracking for one day. Mm -hmm. 
There it is. Product of Thailand. Oh, there's a little burn mark. Got the tray free. Probably gonna clean this up before I put the SATA drive in. There's the StarTech adapter that you need. This one has the best compatibility according to all the internets. This is the drive I'm gonna put in. I know it's old, but I don't care. So is this Xbox, it's old. Just to make sure all my flashing work went okay. Uh, I'm gonna fire it up quick. I think we're good, we lucked out. Also, I'm testing out this uh, Keiko. This Keiko HDMI adapter. So I'm gonna try to use this instead. Much simpler hookup than the whole Xbox HD AV pack. And it is confirmed error seven. So I think we're good to go. I'm gonna move on to burning the discs for the uh, Hexen and also the BIOS checker so we make sure that we get the right BIOS and everything. I have this stack of DVDRs I got from my uh, mother-in-law, so. We're gonna try them out. I know that sometimes the media you use doesn't work with an Xbox, but we'll give it a shot. I've got it makeshift plugged in here. Let's fire it up again. And looks like XBMC is XBMC. -ing. So let's pop this open. Put in my Xbox BIOS checker disc in. It looks like uh, these are the MD5 hashes, so. Uh, obviously that DVD disc works, so I'm gonna burn Hexen now, True Hexen, and see how that goes. True Hexen 2021. Aha! Good sign. Oh, nice. And this is an Xbox version 1.4. So let's check this out. Okay, let's try it. Let's just do the 256K. And everyone is saying that we should do the Evo X or Evox M8 plus FNG. All right, here goes nothing. That's a good sign. That's a good sign so far. Okay, it worked. Evo X, Evox, Xbox Linux. It worked. The BIOS flash worked. Oh, that's awesome. Then we're gonna move on to the next step. We're gonna install the bigger drive and then we're gonna provision that. So we'll do some testing, see how that works and kind of set this up again. Okay, so it is booted up. It boots into Unleash X. So I'm gonna try to go back into True Hex and I noticed that the uh, drive was still locked. Disk lock, unlock, EEPROM backup. Use this to lock or unlock the disk on your TSOP slash chip text box or to backup your system. All right, here we go. Let's do a backup. Now let's unlock it. Done. Back to main menu. Then reboot and shut down. Uh, let's see, admin, system, settings. We go to storage. Status is not locked, so it did work. The next step is that we can take this drive out and swap it in for the larger drive, get that set up. Figured I'd document this. You go into the settings and set up your network. I set it to DHCP so I can get an IP address. And then over on my computer, I just FTP'd. You do uh, FTP colon whack whack and the IP, hit enter. And then you use Xbox for the username and Xbox for the password. That's just the default that's set up in Unleash X. 
And then you could browse the drives. Uh, you could browse the directories and see whatever was on here. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I'm just going to back it up quick and then pull the drive out and store it, save it, because it's an IDE drive, it's very old, and it could die. So. Okay, I inserted the True Hexen 2021 disc, so let's see if this gives us a different result. There we go. So now that we're seeing the partitions created and the drive showing some space on here, we know that it's seeing it. We just need to use XB Partitioner to expand the partitions. So if we press the A button here, it will give us the different uh, partitioning options. So we want this one that just gives us the F drive in this scenario. And then we'll hit the Start button to actually change the partition layout. And then once it's written, then we can just use the hotkey to exit it. And that should be it. By the time we boot back into the Xbox, we'll now see that there is a lot more space on the drive. Now I started to copy some data over to it, that's why you can see my E drive starting to reduce in size. Um, but then you'll see in a moment here that I discovered something interesting. So after doing some further research, I discovered that there is a new BIOS called SurBIOS, SurBIOS, SurBIOS? 2.3.1 that was just released in June of 2023 and apparently this one according to this page has amazing reviews as well as no cons apparently so uh, we verified that we can flash and it's got the evox dash or the evox bios flash on it now let's install this and see what happens I'm gonna have to look this up Hold on a minute. I found the different DMA modes and what we're gonna do here. I'm gonna be able to go with, I believe, UDMA 5. I don't have an SSD, so I won't use UDMA, UDMA 6. But I do have the StarTech um, SATA adapter and 80 wire cable. So I'm gonna do UDMA 5. Okay, some are saying that the Evox is the better method to use. So let's try this now. So Evox, and then UDMA 5. 256K. Let's give this a try. Uh, yes. There we go. That's. Yes. Racing. Flashing. Turn it back on. Aha! Very blue Xbox boot animation. Okay, I, I don't know if we need the disc anymore. I think this is booting the disc, that's why it showed twice. Yeah, okay, cool. Got a file explorer in here. Uh, F, apps, I was trying to get XBMC for gamers installed. I gotta figure that out. I copied some games here, so I'm hoping I don't have to wipe this drive again, but if I do, that's fine. There's nothing on it, essentially. I just copied as a test. That's why you keep your original drive intact and don't mess with that. I'm hoping that this will serve as sort of a guide. We don't want to rely on videos on YouTube as a guide, but at least point you in the right direction and give you the tools to do this on your own. I'm gonna let it boot. I have my disc out now. I don't know if it'll boot properly because I was getting an error 17 earlier, or error 13. Now I'm kind of wondering if that 80 wire cable, because it's got that hole in it, <laughs> if that's causing that problem. I might have to get a new cable, so... 
Unspecified generic error. The Xbox is in Strike Puzzle Man XP, launched to reboot the Xbox. And space. One eternity later. So I checked my cable, and even though there's a hole through it, the wires are still connected. So I just put some tape over it to protect it. The wires somehow escaped the insulation without dying. So I'm just gonna wipe this whole drive and start over. So I know you've stuck with me up until this point, and I showed you one way to do this with True Hexen, but I didn't find this method until way later in the process, and this is the more modern method, is to use Fat Explorer. Um, so what you'll do is you'll take a SATA to USB adapter, or if you have a desktop, you can plug your SATA drive directly into your computer, and then you'll load into Fat Explorer. Now I'll link the package in the description that you can download. This is an ultimate package that has everything. It's got XBMC for gamers, and it's got the Fat Explorer utility in there. So what I'm doing here is I'm showing the drive, we're going to choose it, we're going to choose the Serbios option, remove the G partition for this scenario because you will use a G partition for um, more than one terabyte. If you're doing like a two terabyte drive, you do F to one terabyte and then G for another one terabyte. But what I'm going to do is just use the F drive because I only have 500 gigs. Uh, I'm removing the G drive, just formatting the F drive. And now I'm going in and reloading in here. And what we're doing is we're mounting the C drive as X. So your computer will show X, but it's really the C drive of the Xbox. And this is, um, and then we're just gonna copy the data from the C folder. And we're gonna do the same on mount it, remount the E drive now. And we're gonna copy the data from that E folder that was in that package. And doing the same thing, mounting it as X here and then we're gonna copy all that over and this will take a little while because there's a lot of small files. The data copied. Now unmount the e-partition and close Fat Explorer. Unmount the HDD from your PC and connect it to your Xbox and boot her up. For this step, I used a USB, it's a custom USB to Xbox cable and this lets me plug in regular USB devices like my Logitech K120 keyboard here. Okay, so let's go to Apps, Xbox Explorer, and I believe that this Serbios any file has the config for it, so it looks like that's in here already. So I'm just going to change this to dash path 1, and change this to dash path 3, and then uh, I'm going to save it. And if I'm lucky, oh, look at that. That was, in fact, how you do it. That's pretty easy. Now I got my profile set up. And then if I want to get into Unleash X again, I should be able to open it with a tray open. Or turn it on with a tray open. Let's see what it goes to. Perfect. So if I need to get into Unleash X for, you know, I broke my... XBMC for gamers, and go into here. Now let's load some games. XBMC for gamers, I was kind of putzing around trying to figure this out. Now I loaded that Need for Speed Most Wanted disc into it. And um, you're going to go and hit B on the controller, and that brings up this menu. And I'm going to go to Applications, and then I'm going to choose DVD to Xbox. Now, preferably, you probably don't want to do this with how old Xboxes are, and yeah, pretty much that. But let's uh, see what copy DVD to CD. Uh, choose dump directories. Let's do F games, since F is our large drive, our big share. Destination path. We don't need it to be DVD to Xbox. And again, the keyboard. Yes! All right. Okay, proceed. And we'll just give this some time to copy. Okay, just about finished up here. Took 13 minutes, almost 14 minutes, if there's any games showing up in the game section. Look at that, Need for Speed Most Wanted. That's pretty sick. Let's see if it loads now. Discless. Beautiful. It's working. 
So I just got past the initial part of the game and this is fresh, 0% done with the game. Beautiful. It looks like there's 24 minutes remaining after it's been running for a little bit. And we can see that the Ethernet adapter, which only runs at 100 megabit per second, it's only a fast Ethernet adapter on the Xbox, it looks like we get about 69, 70 Mbps, which is roughly about you know, 7, 8 megabits, or megabytes per second, I should say. So it's still faster than the DVD disc at like 3, 3.5 three megabytes a second, about twice the speed or a little bit better. It'll take, you know, about half the time to copy a disc over and we're copying 15 gigs of games over where Need for Speed Most Wanted was 2.89 gigs uh, or a quarter of the space. Yeah, 23 minutes to copy over the rest of these games is not too bad. I finally got XBMC for Gamers set up and installed. I'll show you what uh, a couple of things that I needed to do to get this all working. but. As you can see here, we've got artwork, we've got a few of my games copied over that I showed uh, doing the FTP copy. There's a couple of different ways you can get your games on here. Go to the uh, DVD to Xbox if you want to rip the games directly. The new kind of new method to use is to do the XISO file. So this is my folder structure currently. As you can see, I've got Jet Set Radio Future just in an XISO format. You don't need to put it in a folder. It doesn't work directly, so you have to do another step to make it work, and I'll show you that step here. Go to Games, Options, Settings, and then I go into Skin Settings, which seems weird. But if you go to Scripts, and in the Scripts, there is uh, Run XISO to HDD Installer Script, and then you point it at the directory, so I go to F Drive and then Games, and then go down to OK, and then it'll scan this folder for any XISO files, and then it'll link them and make them launchable. After you do that, then the game should launch. So games you rip that have the bare files, they go in a folder. Games that are in an ISO or XISO, you just put them in the F games directory. Now, if you notice there's artwork here. So how do we get the artwork? This took me a little bit to figure out. But you go back into Options, Settings, and then Downloader. And when you first run it, there's going to be this thing that says Download Scripts or URLs. So you want to hit OK and download that. It'll take a little bit to set up. Once it loads itself, this whole menu will show up. So then you'll have all these options and you'll go to the artwork section and these ones all have video previews you probably don't need this if you unless you really want to uh, wait for all these downloads to come through just go down to the bottom right where it's xbox artwork installer run that and it's a pretty big download it'll take a while so you download that you need to put that in e slash apps what i meant to say so E slash apps, where all these other apps are, like DVD to Xbox, and then you put Xbox Artwork Installer here. But once you have this, um, you could load the Xbox Artwork Installer if you really wanted to. However, that scripts that I showed you, if you go back into skin settings and then scripts, there's actually Xbox Games Artwork Installer script. So you run that and you hit OK and you'll hit yes to this and then this will want to install the video previews just hit no because that'll take forever and then do you want to skip existing artwork and if you already have artwork then you'll probably want to just hit yes and it'll scan your games and see if there's anything that's needs in the artwork and then it'll install it and that'll be that it'll automatically fill that part for you 
So that basically covers setting this up. I'm not going to go into doing emulation and all that and, and how to set up themes and whatnot. I just kind of set this to the night theme and said, hey, that looks pretty good. So um, to me, this is going to be great. This is going to be easy. Uh, and I think this will be what I'm going to use going forward. One other thing I wanted to show here once this finishes up. So if you go to login, you could do auto login and then just change this toggle so it says you will always log in as whatever your name is and then you just back it up and then when you reboot the xbox it'll just go right in without having to pick the profile and you could set it up so that it goes right to the games list or you can have it go up a folder to like the like here where you got games homebrew applications demos i'm gonna be just running out of games this is the only thing that i'm gonna use like I said, I've got a hacked switch that runs Android, and I've got it full of uh, different emulators and stuff with um, with the atmosphere. It's a hackable switch, and this is more what I would use to emulate. This will emulate the same things the Xbox can emulate anyway. And really, you just want—I just wanted to play these original Xbox titles again. So that basically wraps that up. So let's shift back to cleaning up this Xbox. You notice there's still some caked on dirt and whatnot in here and dust. So I'm gonna take this whole case down to nothing and clean out all the lint and all the dust and all the whatever. And then I'm gonna repack all of this and show the final results. So let's get into that. Now for the next steps here, I cleaned out this tray a little bit more so 
a lot cleaner than it was. <clears throat> and then I'm going to take my Seagate drive and just kind of test fit it here. First, it helps to put it in the right way. There. Now it's nice and secure in here. Notch should be up. The blank pin is on the bottom. Okay, so everything is back together. I just did a quick test, make sure it still powers up, and we're good. And it just leaves the matter of the top cover. I quickly blew out the dust bunnies from it with my Greg Salazar approved air blower gun thingy. Um, probably could have done a better job. But I'm thinking, so I took the metal shielding out of this when I did my mod when I was a kid. I'm thinking maybe I'll just throw that in and see how it looks. Oh, it was almost good except there's that like, little ridge thing in the middle of it. So I just decided to go with some tin foil and put it behind it. It's not super great, but better than what it looked like so let's put the cover back on there we go There we go, it's cleaner, and there we go. Oh, the finishing touch, almost forgot. Hmm, they're not exactly OEM replacement, but that'll work. Kind of, you can see some scratches from it, where this was kind of the high point and it was center, high centering on the middle of it, rather than on these rubber feet. Would have been nice if I had to kept the original rubber feet, but those are long gone. Who knows where they are? There. Now we'll know whose it is. Version 1.4 Xbox. Let's call this restored. working look at that it's a thing of beauty let's launch this game this 
So there you have it. An original Xbox restored. Sort of. I mean, it was already working. It's not like I resurrected it or anything, but uh, if you got one of these, definitely consider trying to fix it and, you know, get that clock capacitor changed out and, you know, just bring some new life back into these machines and put a big drive in, make it last. There's some games that weren't backwards compatible on any other, like, 360 or Xbox One. There are just some games... Some games that could only play on an original Xbox, so keep these uh, old machines alive. I'm going to have another one. I've got an Xbox 360 that I'd like to tackle as well, so stay tuned for that. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, appreciate all the support. Uh, please like and subscribe. See you in the next one. God bless. Take care.